Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's cook along webinar. So today what we are going to be doing is this is the third in a series I previously covered gluten free dairy free sugar free stir fries, and then soups last month this month we're going to be covering salads next month I'm probably going to try to do desserts but I am still trying to figure out exactly what I'm gonna cover the next couple months. But anyhow, so for tonight, we're covering salads. So the way that I'm gonna do this is, first of all, I'm gonna talk with you about some of the basics of what I feel like should be in a lot of good healthy salads, some of my favorite recipes, some of the things to avoid when it comes to looking at gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free, and just some of the things that just goes into making a really good salad. So of course, the first thing you gotta start with, which hopefully you guys can see that, is your lettuce. And I like to use just like the big box of like the spring mix. So you can see it's got the different kinds of lettuce in there. And you can also add in a little bit of like the iceberg lettuce if you want, or you could technically even do one just with iceberg. But personally, I like more of the spring mix. And then once I have that on my plate, I like to add on some different things for crunches. So things like some different cucumbers. And I think I'm gonna need to actually not blur my background because it's a little harder for you to see. Okay, so there, some cucumber. And then in addition to that, a couple of the things I also sometimes like to put for crunch is you can use like a little bit of like raw red onion and this is raw red onion right here. You basically can just chop it up and do like a little bit. So if I was doing just like a one regular salad plate like that, I would probably just cut up and put, you know, maybe just like one or two little rounds and cut them up. You don't want to do too much because red onion is one of those things that it is a little bit, has kind of a little bit of a punch, I guess, if you will, especially if you eat raw red onion. So if you put too much, it can end up being just a little bit too, add a little bit too much of a spice, I guess, if you will. And then another thing that could be really good to add for crunch is like some chopped up bell pepper. So like green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, orange pepper, whatever you want. I don't personally have any at the moment. So tonight I'm not gonna do that, but you could put that as well. And then, the other thing that I find works really well is a lot of times people that are not gluten-free will use, you know, like croutons or different things like that. And there probably are gluten-free croutons out there. Personally, that's not something I've really ever used is to use some kind of seeds. So you have things like a little bit of like your sunflower seeds or like this right here is some pumpkin seeds that you can use or you can use like some different kinds of nuts. So like this is pine nuts, but you could also put in like walnuts, cashews, even almonds or almond slices you could put on top of that. And then once you've done that, then I like to add anywhere from one to three additional kinds of vegetables or things. So you could put like some olives on, you could put on like some sliced beets. Personally, this is a canned beet and with the canned beets, the trick you are going to have is that they are all generally have a little bit of sugar in them. So they're not totally sugar free because they are fermented. In order to ferment those beets, they have to put a little bit of sugar in, but it's typically pretty minor. A lot of times the sugar really more or less boils off. So even though the label still says there's a little bit of sugar, technically you don't have that much. If you really don't want to have any at all, you can go through the work yourself of boiling the beets, slicing them, that kind of thing, but it's just a lot more work. So personally, I like to get them canned and use just like a couple of slices on top of your salad. Then the other thing you can also use is you can use like some of these garbanzo beans. The garbanzo beans are typically the bean that is the base of hummus. So if you buy like hummus at the store, then the garbanzo beans or chickpeas, they're basically the same thing. They just go by two different names are going to be what it's made from. So you could either put a few of those on your salad or you could actually use hummus. You could either buy it at the store. I've personally never seen hummus that had gluten, dairy or sugar in it. So, you know, it's a pretty safe thing to be able to put on there. If you use a store-bought or you can make your own by basically 
just taking like a can of these and then you get a high speed blender and you mix these with a little bit of tahini or sesame paste, a little bit of lemon juice and then typically a little bit of olive oil and you just blend it up and then you can put that on your salad as well too if you want to make your own hummus. The biggest thing there is that a lot of times when you make your own hummus it doesn't end up being quite as thick and there's a little bit of a different taste and I'm not really quite sure why your own hummus doesn't quite turn out the same as a store-bought but that's just kind of how it is. And then if you want to do something like tomatoes you could use those as well or avocados. I really, really like putting avocados on salad. Typically though, some people will like to put like both tomatoes and avocados personally, because those are both fruits. I like to pick one or the other. So, and then on the very top, I would put something like, this is like a vegan, like dairy-free Parmesan cheese. This is the Trader Joe's one. There are other brands out there you can get as well, though, if you don't have access to Trader Joe's. Or you can do, if you're not dairy-free and you just are trying to avoid gluten and sugar, you could do something like a little bit of feta cheese or find like a vegan feta cheese or something like that. And then just put that on the top. One of my favorite combinations is doing something like lettuce, cucumber, red onion, olive, tomato, and then some kind of either dairy feta or dairy-free cheese and makes kind of like a good, really kind of like good Greek salad's a really good one. Another combination that can be really good is doing, you know, like a little bit of a lot of the stuff. So you have a little bit of the lettuce with the cucumbers, you have a little bit of the garbanzo beans, a little bit of beets, a little bit of olives, a little bit of the dairy-free cheese, and a little bit of one of the seeds. So typically, or nuts, so typically I will choose from one of the seeds or nuts. I'm typically not going to just go put all the seeds or all the nuts on at once or put more than one that ends up being really almost too much so another combination that can be really good would be to do like the lettuce and cucumbers with like some tomato and a little bit of olives and maybe like some of their garbanzo beans and then maybe like a little bit of like some almonds or even cashews or walnuts or another variation that can also be really good as well is kind of like the Greek salad that I already mentioned, but maybe if you don't want to use red onion, you could get rid of the red onions or you could add on like a few walnuts. Look, tastes really good with the Greek salad. You could try some of the other nuts and seeds, but personally, if you're going to do kind of that combination with the tomatoes and the cheese and the olives and things, I feel like if you're going to put nuts or seeds that will, um, walnuts or almonds typically taste the best. So you can try that. And I find that if you do it right, you don't really have to have a dressing, but the dressing is really going to be the main thing that's going to have the potential for you to end up with gluten, dairy, or sugar if you're not really, really careful. So any kind of a dressing that you're going to buy and not make at home is going to be something that you're going to want to check and read labels for. So this is one dressing here that I have right here that it does have some natural flavors and some gums and things in it, which I don't love, which is part of the reason I like to make my own. But this is a Walden Farms raspberry vinaigrette that is sweetened with monk fruit and zerdatol, so it doesn't have, you know, the actual cane sugar or honey or any of the, you know, sugar sugar in it. But it does still have a little bit of, you know, more your natural sweeteners. There also is another brand out there that is called uh, Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen stuff is typically a little bit more expensive, but they do have a lot of gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free dressings and sauces and things. And, or then the other option that you also have is, you know, of course, to read labels. You can search different grocery stores, try to figure out if you can find some dressing that you like that doesn't have any of that in it. Or the other option that I really like that some people, you know, may not love it, but you can get some kind of like balsamic vinegar and there's a lot of different kinds out here this is a Trader Joe's one that is just a balsamic vinegar but there are some out there that will even have like different flavors so like a balsamic vinegar with like a little bit of lemon or orange or different things added to it or you can do something like a rice wine vinegar so there's like different kinds of those and you can put just like a little bit of the vinegar and then you can and drizzle that on your salad. Then you can drizzle on like some olive oil 
or some avocado oil to add on for dressing. Or I know one thing my mom likes to do is just take fresh squeezed lemons and just squeeze a little bit of that lemon on the salad to add kind of that kick and that little bit of that dressing. But yeah, it's, I find that a lot of people just get stuck up on thinking that they need, you know, a lot of the dressings that add that gluten, dairy, sugar, fat, all that kind of stuff. And you really don't need a lot of dressings, I find, or even of your own, or even if you can, you know, do a healthier-ish dressing, you don't need a lot if you do it properly. And that's actually also where hummus can come in is because hummus can actually almost serve kind of like a dressing or, you know, for me personally, I like having avocados on my salad because avocados can create kind of that creamy or you can even make like an actual guacamole and put that on top of your salad. And then that can, you know, create kind of that texture with, I guess, a little bit of the liquid added in with the lettuce and the crunch to make it so that you're, you know, you feel like you you're not just eating a dry salad, if I guess you will, because some people just don't like the dryness of the leaves. So you can add on something to make it so that it's a little bit wetter and has kind of that consistency. So those are some of the things that I like. You have Ultimately, though, I find that it really helps to just kind of consider what your tastes are. And really the basics that I rule of thumb that I find is if you do like the right kind of lettuce, you know, you make sure it's fairly fresh, it's not all wilted, it's not kind of gross. You do that, and then you do between two to three different kinds of vegetables. So whether that's cucumber, whether that's peppers, whether it's the garbanzo or chickpeas, the beets, the olives, the red onion, you pick just like two to three of those, and then you put, you know, some kind of crunch, whether that's almonds, walnuts, cashews, sesame seeds or sunflower seeds or pine nuts or whatever that is. And then if you want, you can put on, you know, like either, like I said, like a feta cheese or some kind of dairy-free cheese and then a little bit of the dressing. And then that works really good. And then the other option you also can do sometimes that I will do would be like a can of tuna, or you can cook up some chicken breast and top it off into small pieces or even get like canned chicken and put that on to make it more of a complete meal if you're not vegan, you know, and you want to have like a little bit more of that meat added on, or technically you could even do shrimp, or if you eat beef, you could put like some hamburger on there. Personally, I don't eat beef, so I don't ever do that, but you know, you could either have that meat that's on there, or, you know, you could just leave it to the side, and yeah, that's that's basically how I like to do it. I find that if you follow that as a general rule of thumb, then it works pretty well. And yeah, like I said, just a couple of the main things that I personally prefer is I don't like to overload the salad with too many things. I like to have, you know, like one kind of cedar nut, but not more than one. And I generally like to have either avocados or tomatoes and not both just because they are fruits. And so if you put too much of both of the fruit, it can be a little bit too sweet and the combination can be a little bit too much. But that's personally just like how I like to do things. So yeah, so that's how I like to do gluten-free, dairy-free and sugar-free salads. And if you want to find some more recipes, you can check out my blog, which is basically my name at analarabrown.com. And that is pretty much it for right now. I am going to stop the recording and we will see what kinds of questions we have.